actually to go to the web and before your research proposal, writing your research proposal, but at the same time later when you conduct your research as well. The huge topic, so I'm not going to take the challenge of doing everything in this uh, 40 minutes, whatever we have left. Okay? Survey research, as we call it in general, it is, it is located in qualitative and quantitative research methods. If it is questionnaire, it is quantitative research method. If it is interviews, it is located in qualitative research method. In particular, when you look at in applied, um, applied social research, extensively applied surveys, whether questionnaire or interviews. And interviews can be available in different ways, which we'll be looking at later. Uh, but the objective is to measure. It's a measurement for censure. It, uh, it involves of asking people questions uh, about a particular issue that is the subject matter of your research. Therefore, a survey can be anything from a short paper, okay, to a paper extensive feedback form or to an intensive and in-depth interview or any interviews as we call them. It is utilized in everyday life. I'm sure that you have come across uh, in different ways the company is approach you, they send you a questionnaire uh, to respond because they are taken to measure your responses. How you like the product for you. Okay? And it is very much instrumental uh, with the idea of improving the marketing uh, and the higher sales of some of the services and products companies provide. And in the academia as well, they use in great detail to reveal the ideas, opinions, behaviors, attitudes of our respondents on a particular research topic you have. You want to look at the potential demand for Islamic finance in Nigeria. We want to look at the impact of microfinance in Bangladesh by the participants of microfinance day. Okay. We want to look at the community relations in Leicester, in Gujarat, in India, and etc. These are all involved, one way or another, revealing people's ideas on a particular issue. But not only that, you might have a particular verse in the Quran and that you want to explore people's understanding towards that particular verse in the Quran. So you conduct interviews with scholars and probably with ordinary people to look at their understanding. So these are the issues for which you might be able to use survey in terms of questionnaire or, um, or interview. And the whole idea is to get an accurate information for the purpose that we are dealing with. It is, as you can see, the handout is fairly detailed. We have plenty of material there, and some of our technical materials to help us how to construct our survey, and others looking into the particularities of interviews as questionnaires. When we look at the definition of what survey is and what it involves, the survey involves the collection of information from a sample of individuals through their responses to already established categories. Those categories are the questions in our surveys as well as in our interviews. Okay, or as you can see on the definition. In other words, with your questionnaire, you look at how that particular research question you have, of what are the general trends in people's responses, opinions, and preferences, and perceptions. So you establish a general pattern that governs that particular relationship that we have already established. Therefore, there is a, by nature, it has, um, surveys have a particular way of collecting data uh, and analyzing data in a later part. <coughs> this is just a technical way <coughs> of establishing matrices. But you want to use it. So what they call cross-tabulation, for instance, when you conduct a cross-tabulation through your questionnaire, you want to see, yes, you have information about the gender of individuals, but you have information about the, uh, the educational background. So you want to establish a matrix team, how many of the women respondents are educated, in what level, how many men is educated in 
not level, right? It's publishing matrix of cross tabulation. Uh, one way or another, of course, in our <coughs> surveys, looking into large or small population, depending on your research question, uh, <coughs> out of your population that we define, uh, we look at the incidence distribution and interrelations of sociological as well as psychological variables, or for that matter, economic uh, difference. And we establish attributes which represent the social group that we deal with. We look at those attributes can be gender, income level, education level, political and religious affiliation, socioeconomic status, living expenses, occupation of people, and etc. In other words, every questionnaire and some of the structured interviews would have uh, demographic information, asking demographic information about people, the respondents in the world. Therefore, through surveys, we collect data on a number of units at a single juncture in time. Okay, so it is a cross sectional data. Today, or in one week time, we approach a number of people and we collect data during that period in question on various issues that we have identified in our questionnaires. So it is cross sectional at one point in time. Unlike, of course, there are different ways of conducting. You might conduct a questionnaire today uh, and Five years later, you go back to see what happened to those people, their ideas, their opinions, etc. So there are different ways of conducting, but in a very simple method, uh, you are conducting in a period of time, in a junction in time, junction in junction, junction in time, with a view of collecting semantic data, but it was mostly quantifiable data, however, with interviews, qualitative data, respond to the research question to establish the <laughs> now, why we carry out surveys? What's the logic? And because it's popular now, extensively, if you look at Montreal Institute dissertation over the years, you will see an extensive use of surveys in collecting primary data. So, the most important issue, of course, why we use surveys is to collect primary data. Now, remember the difference between primary and secondary data. Primary data is your own data. It's not available to anyone else. It's not available to you as well from collecting from other places. It is you who collect it. And it is your own data. Unless you reveal to others, it won't be available to anyone else. So that makes the difference between secondary and the primary data. So in order to collect the primary data from your particular research, you will conduct a survey. And it is, um, it is the, one of the best methods that we utilize to collect and original or the final data to describe the population and at, 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 at the same time establish general patterns that govern that particular relationship, that particular sample that we have in mind. 